Hey, Sam, are you ready to do some teaching? What's up, AC? Oh, there he is. How you doing, AC? I'm doing great, man. I, I had a good weekend. I'm feeling refreshed. How about you? What'd you do this weekend? Did you go camping? I we we did camp in our front yard. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah, we got a new camper, so we we did the full on test out out in the front yard. So it was fun. And how was the first test, buddy? It went well. Went well. We didn't, I really like it. I actually love the kitchen in there. I cooked oh, a bunch of dinners in there. Man, it was good times. Well, you're a good good cook, you know, coming out of chef school. The dogs like in the camper? They love it. They have a lot more space. They're not getting stepped on. <laughs> That's important. Take care of those kids. All right, buddy, right. let's get back in here and do some dry cutting. All right, guys, I'm excited about this today because, yes, I've got this new shear I want to talk to you about. Uh, I really enjoyed Jesse Linares working with it at Show Must Go On. If you missed that, make sure you keep an eye out for our shows Must Go On. I just really want to say thank you to AC for being here today, buddy. I appreciate you. We love having you back uh, back there on board there, taking care of everybody and uh, know that we appreciate you. I also want to thank the team outside of this. You know, I don't really get a chance and opportunity to thank the team that really supports all these these events that we do in terms of our lives. We're led by the amazing Dana Schutzbauer, who is really uh, amazing in regards to just the education side and how she's brought everything together in regards to our educational calendar, getting things in lined up, and also um, our ambassador program, which is something huge. And uh, as Andrew said, Al Campbell will be coming up as an Sam V ambassador on Thursday. A special shout out to Katie Gould also in the back who works very extremely hard on marketing and social with Dana and uh, Kurt Gerheim who happens to be at the dentist today. Nothing serious, just getting some things taken care of. We miss you, buddy. And then there's also Tom King who's also involved in sales. But there's a lot of people in the back that you just don't hear about. And I want to give credit to Tom for really, you know, pushing forward the classic shear and really being aware of there's a tribe out there that says, I'm not comfortable with your handle, Sam. Wish you just had a normal handle, which is basically what a cl the classic is. It's an offset handle. And I'll talk about that. All right, dry cutting. <clears throat> I want to get into dry cutting a little bit differently today. <clears throat> Walk you through a haircut, but at the same time, give you the idea of what tool to use, when to use it, and then give you a couple techniques that are going to go with that. So what I've pre-done is I pre-sectioned just one side. I want you to watch me section the other side. Now, this is just natural texture. Okay, this is happens to be a Lydia mannequin. This is a great mannequin. This is a Sanvia a Pivot Point Lydia mannequin. Absolutely love this mannequin because of the texture it has. Not only that, but the density it has. And this is something that um, Andrew and I worked really hard with Pivot Point to make sure we had a really good mannequin that had some length, get a couple haircuts out of it, and do some long hair. Let's take a look at the sectioning first. Uh, I'm going to be working with triangles, and I'm going to work with triangles because triangles are giving me this concept of short to long hair. It's a real simple way to create a length that goes from extreme, extremely short to long. There's a number of ways to do things, first of all, and dry cutting is not meant for everyone. So I just want to clarify that. Number one, I was always taught how to cut things wet. But I think you need to really expand your toolbox in today's world in regards to what's in front of you and how to work with it. Embrace all textures. Some textures are much better if we cut them dry. Now I'm going to cut this dry because I want to have a little bit more control. Just I want to see the lines that I cut. So I want you to understand dry cutting is a visual exercise for the hairdresser so you can see the result of that cutting edge. And at that time, given time, you can soften it. So we'll talk about various ways to go about it. So what I want you to look at is the top view of this, okay? I'm going to work with the middle part just to balance the shape out. Once you balance the shape out, guys, then you can come in and you can decide, well, do I want to go to the side? Which side do you want to go? Okay, that's going to be a client decision and based upon which side or maybe they go like to take it both ways. So work off the center part. Because I'm going to extremely layer this, what are you going to go for, Sham? Sam? <laughs> Did you like that, Andrew? Sham? It's kind of a, I'm going to go for a pixie shag mullet. So you call it whatever you want. I'm going to take this top extremely short, work into an extreme kind of like uh, uh, Mia Farrell pixie, kind of pixie, but into a shag kind of uh, Brady Bunch like almost, but then longer in terms of what you see today with some long pieces, very transparent. A haircut maybe not meant for everybody, but I want you to watch how I'm going to go ahead and approach this so that you guys can get some ideas in regards to this, how this is happening. Okay. 
So set apart. Then our next thing you want you to do is follow the red here. I want you to uh, divide just front to back. So divide that front to back. Now, once you have that, I also want you to look at how we at San Villa divide this back area. You can know, see how what we're doing here is we're including a little bit more hair into that side area. So see, if you take a look at this back ear area, most people bring this line right up to the top. We want to create a little bit more hair here because it's such a transition of how this hairline moves that a lot of times when we layer hair, we leave this very transparent. But even though I'm going to go for a transparent, I want you to be aware of the, the sectioning there. Okay. Now, once we have that, then what I want you to do inside of this plus sign, I just want you to create an X. Okay. So for my principal base design friends, yes, I'm going to divide it by the bevels, but yet look at the way we're doing here at Sam Villa. We're slightly in the back. Then we go for that corner back in the back that you see right here for my PBD friends. For my non-PBD friends, just disregard what I said. Follow me here with the plus sign and then the X sign. Now, why the X, Sam? Because what we've discovered, guys, is that there's, there's a corner that happens here. If I just take the comb on one side of the head and then back on the, that uh, roundness of the head, where they meet, that right there is going to be what we defer to as a corner. Just follow that line, and then that's going to give you that X pattern that I'm talking about. All right, guys? So now once you got this, then you're going to be ready to cut. So let's go in and divide this off for you. So we're going to divide front to back first. Okay, so now here's that hairline that I'm talking about. See how this jumps up? Sometimes when we extremely layer this, we overlayer that. It gets extremely uh, sparse right behind that ear. Then we're trying to take the length shorter to make up for it. So I'm going to go right from that high point of the head, right just back down slightly, and look how I just filled that in. Can you see how I filled that in? Okay, now once I'm there, go to the tri triangle of the eye, go at the corner of the eye, create another triangle to the high point. Now once you're here, look how I'm working with my hands and I'm not overcombing this. I'm going to work, show you what tool I'm going to work with, and then what tool I'm going to, what tools I'm going to work with, and then how I'm going to approach this in terms of I'm cutting. Yes, I'm going to comb it. Based upon the gauge of curl that you have determines whether or not I choose to work with a curl, a comb or not. Okay. Loki for M from the UK. Glad you're here with us. Kelly from Atlanta. Hey, Brian. Always great to be with you. Love the graphs. So, uh, thank you, Brian. Glad that you worked that. Make sure you guys are taking screenshots of this and I'll get out of the way so that you can do that at a certain point. Andrew will remind me. All right. Back up. Here's that one. This is the side area. See how much more massive hair I have in that side area? That's what's great, guys. That when you're doing these shags and these overly layered haircuts, as I'm about to do, what I want you to be aware of is this area that's behind the ear. Notice I'm also working with a tail comb. Now, I'm working with a tail comb, guys, because this way it just gives me the line rather than me trying to comb through with a comb with all the teeth. It just makes it a lot easier. Once again, <clears throat> When you're working with different types of textures of hair, it's important that we understand, let's take different types of approaches, okay? Hi, Carmen from Florida. Beautiful in here in Florida, isn't it? Hi, Sonia. How's our favorite fan, Sonia? I hope you're doing well, my dear, and life is good wherever you happen to be. I think you're uh, way far away. I know that. All right, let's go to the back now. Now look at what we have, okay? Now that corner back is going to be right there. So my for my PBD friends, yes, it's a lot more narrow than it normally is. For my non-PBD friends, disregard what I said. You're probably going, Sam, what's PBD? Principle-based design. It's Redkin's way of, uh, of, of understanding uh, the end results of why you get what you get in terms of a foundation of cutting. And I really believe that's really important. Just did a release on that in terms of understanding principles and fundamentals. I really believe, Andrew, that we're really getting back into that concept of, you know, discipline. Even though we're compressing, even though we might be taking small sections. Please understand, guys, I'm not here to dictate to you that, you know, this is a way that dry cutting needs to be. This is what works for Sam right now. Okay, so next month I might be doing something a little bit differently. That's what I love about just the idea of just a discovering and exploring in terms of what you're doing. So now you can see all of my section I have. And then you might say, well, Sam, that's taking a lot of time. Watch how I'm going to go in and I'm going to cut this. So let's just examine this from a top view. You can see this is my plus sign there. And then what I did was I divided front to back. That's that back side area there and here. Then I went for that triangle fringe area. So I've actually got four sections in that back. 
And then I have four sections, in, excuse me, in the front and four in the back. So a total of eight sections. So once again, time consuming, eh, it could be, but then again, discipline. You know, it's just going to give me discipline when I'm cutting this. So what am I going to work with? I'm going to work with a large tooth comb. And I'm going to work with a white large tooth comb because I'm going to be compressing. I'm going to divide it into sections, but uh, not small sections, larger sections so that I can press it. Now, when people talk about compressing, you might be thinking, well, Sam, what's compressing mean? Compressing means you're just taking a large section and you're compressing in your hand, okay, rather than a small section. So let's take and the analogy I use. A lot of you may have heard me explain this, but the analogy I love to use is the analogy of a paper cutter. And more paper you place in the paper cutter, you close it, you don't get a very straight line. The paper kind of mo moves on you. So the line's kind of curved, kind of crooked. But in this particular case, that's what I'm looking for. So what we've discovered by taking large sections, it gives you that little bit more of a soft edge. You may still need to be going and require some texturizing, but then again, that's up to you. Watch what we're going to do here. Let's start in the back area. So I'm going to start in this back area back here. Now, follow me over here. Okay, so what I want to do is I'm going to take this right back area. So I'm going to take her right back right here, this one here. Okay, I'm going to take this. And I'm going to bring everything to this right to that point area. I'm going to take some sections. So and you can see I'm going to take one, two, possibly three sections, maybe just two, depending upon the area they had where I'm at and the more hair that I have. Now, I'm going to work with our classic shear. Now, this is our common signature series forward set. OK, that is ergonomically correct. Notice how my thumb didn't move. Now. What we've done is there's a tribe out there. This is the new classic. It comes in a signature series, 6.50. This is, this is signature series 7, okay? This is a signature series classic, okay? This is, look at the handles. So now this is the handle that I actually grew up with, okay? An offset handle. What we moved to was we discovered a forward set handle, ergonomically correct. Yet some people don't like this handle so forward. They're so accustomed to this. So we want to please that tribe. Same steel, aluminum alloy. That's what we work with, Japanese steel. So it's the same steel, the same tension plate, the same tension screw. It's just the same crane handle, but it's forward set. So I'm going to work with a 6.5. OK, now I'm going to start in this right back. So once again, just, you know, trying to please those people that say request. I want just a normal shear to work with. All right. Look at the texture. See that texture that I've got that I'm working with. Now you can see there that texture. I'm actually going to change tripods, Andrew. So it's a little higher for them. that texture has some curl to it. OK, this is a Lydia mannequin. That's what I love about this mannequin. It's got a beautiful texture to it. Once again, from Pivot Point. All right, there. Now I've got a little bit more flexibility with that. All right, guys, can you see? All right. Hi, Becca. How are you doing, my dear? I hope you are doing well. All right, so watch what I'm going to do. What are you going to do first, Sam? I want to put my shape in. Then watch how I'll come back in. I'm going to detail this, but let's get this shape in first, okay? Large tooth comb, and as I said, yes, I'm going to comb through it, okay? Now watch how I'll divide this in half. And I'm going to bring this up and I'm going to bring this right up to that point. And then look where I'm placing my hand. OK, so let's give you a, a side profile view and just examine that. Look how short that is inside there. Don't panic. OK, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a degree of shortness. I want this one to really, you know, I want it to have some impact, some real impact. OK, so now I'm just going to notch it. OK, so now look how I notch right into that. OK. Look how I'm using my ring finger as a means as guiding my stable blade. See that? My action blade is my thumb blade. My stable blade is that blade underneath my guiding blade. Now that's stabilized by my ring finger. Now I just move it back and forth. Okay. Now look at the degree of shortness that I got on that. Okay. Very short. I'm not concerned about that way pattern yet. I want to put my silhouette in. All right. Now let's go back to this section. Second section. So I'm bringing everything out. Now watch, I'm going to give you a profile view of that. Look how I'm using that shape of the head. Just bring it up. I'm working with the white teeth of the large comb. Okay. Now I'm using that comb right underneath. I'm following a guide. 
So there is a guide here. I'm going to take the comb underneath, fold, so that I can see my guide. Okay? So that's just a really safe way to go in. What I don't want you to do is when you're dry cutting, because the hair is dry, it's very difficult to see through that. So don't try to see through the section for a guide. All right? Now watch what happens. When I release this, I want you to watch this. Look how I'm getting this angle that's short to long. That's what's so cool about cutting it this way. I'm not having to lift this up and really just go in there. And um, I'm not having to lift it up and establish vertically this angle that does this or holding it this way. All right. Now, I want that a little bit more aggressive. A little bit more aggressive. Yes. I want it a little bit more aggressive. So I'm going to come through. And once again, watch what I'm doing. I'm going to take it down about another inch. Sam, that top is so short. Guys, calm down. Okay, what I love about the concept of cutting this in this fashion with these eight sections and working with triangles is the fact that it gives me this angle that works short to long, but it's only a small area that's rather very short. See, only that area is short. Look how much extreme longer everything else gets. So that's what's so important about that. Let's go to the opposite side. See now how I just I move to the opposite side of center. That's all I'm going to do is just move to the opposite side of center. And I'm working with two sections. Now, when you're dry cutting, I suggest you add a small amount of moisture to it. So I'm going to work with Redkins One United. Okay. This product I happen to love when I dry cut. Number one, it just gives me a little product will give you a little bit of control. And then I want you to notice how I had this sectioned up. I use these little elastic ponytails. Or excuse me, I use my dry cutting clips. Sometimes I will use my elastic ponytails, and I'll use that for other sections, but I love using my elastic dry cutting clips, okay, guys? Great, because they won't leave any marks on the hair. So just a small amount of One United, and as I work with that One United now, it's just going to give me a little bit more control. Wide teeth section, I'm dividing it into half. Now watch how I'm going to bring this up and over. So my body position, I want you to notice now, my body position is completely opposite the section. So I'm opposite the section. So let me give it to you here, okay? The section I'm cutting is here. So now rather than me cutting away from me and trying to see the guide, I'm going to stand on this side so that the guide is facing me. I just simply lift, there's my guide, I see it, and I come right to it. My guide, my ring blade is my guide. Excuse me, my guide blade <laughs> goes on my ring finger. <laughs> I had too much fun this weekend. Okay, I hope everybody else, else did. All right, now when I release, you're going to start to just see that whole idea of getting that shortness. And then watch when I go back in and I just kind of start to work on my length. You'll see how I'm going to work with my length. I'm going to introduce you to something that's really cool in regards to that length. All right. Any questions so far, AC? How are we doing? Doing good. Um, Brian had asked if that creates a concave or convex. And so that's because it's going to be shorter at the top, the longer at the perimeter. Sassoon would refer, refer to that as concave. That's correct. Absolutely right, buddy. All right. So, Brian, you got that, buddy? It's more concave because when it releases, it releases more of the head shape. And concave kind of gives it that little bit more of a kind of like it does this, it just kind of caves in. All right, here we go. And I'm just releasing that. And you can watch this, watch now. I'm, look how that, what I love about this, how this is really layering this out, but look at all the length that it's leaving that, leaving there. So if you desire to leave length, this is a great way to go in and cut. What you wanna do is just simply pull away from an area when you desire to leave the length, okay? I'm just continuing to work. Notice how I'll just work with the wide teeth of the comb, and I'm just combing, okay? Step to the opposite side. So I maneuvered myself to the opposite side. I bring it up to right to that high point. So my hand right now, guys, is sitting right on top of where all of those eight sections meet, at the point of that triangle. That's where I hold my hand. Okay. When you're dry cutting, a lot of times what happens is you have to train your eyes, Andrew, to look at things a little bit differently. So don't let the hair tell you that, you know, you think you might have made a mistake. Okay. I think once you go through, remember, you're dry cutting. So once you go through and you moisten things down a little bit, it's a little bit different in terms of the way that it, uh, it uh, happens as an end result. 
the curl kind of starts to pop in. Any tips on controlling such a large mass of hair, Sammy? Well, here's why. If you've noticed recently, Andrew, I don't know if you've noticed, I picked this guy up. I got to be honest and tell you, AC, I just got tired. You know, I've been working on dry cutting for a while. I just got tired of using this comb and fighting with my sections because I wanted to compress. So then I thought, okay, well, I'll use this comb. I mean, and then I thought, well, see, guys, it's not about the coolness. It's about what works for you. So I picked up this comb and I thought, well, do I use a large comb? And then I started working with it thinking, this is so much easier. So I want you to understand, pick up a large comb and work with it. It's amazing. There's a man out there that I used to follow and watch back when I was growing up and I was young in the industry. His name was Yosh Toya. Andrew, I'm sure you've heard of Yosh Toya. Who hasn't heard oh, of Oh, yeah. Yosh Toya? Okay. I took a class from Yosh back in 2001. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Large tooth comb. And that's how he cut. It was almost not French, but it's kind of French, but not quite. But really interesting in terms of watching him cut. And the reason he used a large tooth comb is because he told me, he said, Sam, I have more control with the hair. He goes, it's a matter of what you're comfortable with. And I'll never forget that. So, guys, you know what? It's not It's not a matter of, well, is, it, is everybody using it? Is it cool? That's not what the case is about. What the case is about, I think, today is what's comfortable for you. Let me give it to you this way, guys. I really believe that if you take a look at what's happening in the furniture industry, wood has become so expensive, Andrew. I mean, I feel sorry. i got a buddy that's building a house in Florida, and he started building it. Now he's just getting hit with these costs of wood. So what's going to happen is you're going to find that people are going to move more towards vintage. Why make something new? Let's take something that was, and let's maybe add a fresh coat of paint, sand it, kind of alter it a little bit differently. I think, Andrew, that's the same thing we're doing with hair. You know, we're just discovering, you know, but let's go, let's start to work with uh, the natural movement. So now that said, if you say to me, well, Sam, what's happening? What do you feel in your opinion? What do you feel might be the next big movement? I think the next big movement is going to be exactly what you're seeing. It's just going to get louder. And that is people are going to start to embrace what they have, their natural movement, their natural curl. Why? Because of simplicity. But what we need to do as hairdressers, we need to go in and we need to show them how to work with their natural movement. So I think that's important. I think if there's one tool, Sam, tell me one tool that you're picking up a lot now. What would it be? Diffuser. I picked up a diffuser this morning on this mannequin just to check out the curl. I picked up, I've been picking up a diffuser a lot more on my, my finishing. And that's because I'm working with the diffuser more or less just to crinkle the hair. And I'm working with my hands. At the same time, I think what's going to happen is that you're working with flat irons, not to flatten and straighten out hair, but we're working with flat irons to give hair texture. We're working with flat irons to give hair more movement. Okay. I think that's important. You're welcome, Brian, JC. You're welcome. Okay. But that's important. You know, you have to really understand. I think that people are going to start to embrace it. Now, is this haircut for everybody? No. I think what you have to do, Andrew, is we have to discover the personality. What personality do you have sitting in your chair? That's what you need, what we need to be asking ourselves. Now, watch when I cut this front. Because this front sits higher. Now, look at where I'm at. I'll show you where I'm at. I'm in control. Don't worry. See, this is that front triangle in the fringe right there. Okay. So now look how I stand opposite this. And I bring this. I'm bringing everything right here. This is where I'm at right now. Okay. I'm bringing everything right to that point. This is where I'm at right now. Right to that point. You see that? Okay. So now watch. What's going to happen because this hair sits higher than this hair, what do you think is going to happen? This hair is going to get shorter or is it going to get longer? Write in the chat box. Write it in the chat box. What do you feel? Is it going to get longer in that front face frame area or is it going to get shorter? Okay. And something has something to do with that. And it's the face frame. So let's see. Write in the chat box. Longer or shorter? Yes, Stacy. Yes, you're absolutely right. Watch. See, it's gotten shorter. So now it's giving me... Now it's giving me this angle, but I haven't touched the length. So you're thinking, yeah, but what about the balance, Sam? Guys, think inside, outside. Been talking about that for years now. 
layer inside, and then let's come back and let's adjust. Remember, I want this leg that, that to be, have some to be a shortness to it. Look, look at the angle I got out of that. See that? Okay, so let the hairline create things for you. Watch again. Now, this one should jump up and end up about somewhere maybe there. Okay, why? Once again, it's not traveling as far to my guide, to my guiding position or my starting point. So, Sam, would you say that everything here is a traveling guide? Yes. Everything is a, tra is, uh, excuse me, everything is brought to a stationary guide. That's what I want to say, Becca. Everything is brought to a stationary guide. So you're cutting to a stationary guide. I'm going to show you how I cut this one. Okay. Stay right there. Okay. See where I'm at? Okay. Here's, there's her face. I'm over here. Now watch when I release this front. Let's take a look at when I release this front. Okay. When I release this front, watch how that front's now going to have that degree of shortness moving into this. Are you seeing this, guys? Look how I'm getting my angle and everything and my layers. And I'm getting my angle. Look at the angle. Okay. I'm getting that angle and I'm layer and layers. And now this is how I started. Look at, see that? That's how I started all that one, pretty much one length, just as it came out, just got on my section. But now you can just start to see the silhouette of that. And I see, see things getting shorter here, Andrew, and they're kind of moving forward. You know, this whole idea of wolf, uh, wolf, uh, what they call a wolf cut or a, a hush cut. South Koreans right now are very popular in terms of what a shullet, you know, a shag and a mullet, a mob, a, a mullet and a bob, a, a shaglet, a shag and a mullet. <laughs> I mean, it just goes on. But you're seeing this whole idea of a wolf cut coming in from uh, South Korea where the youth there are just establishing, working on a haircut that they can just allow their hair to be and have something to it. So you can see how I got that one side. Now we repeat the same thing on this opposite side. Questions? Yeah, Sam, can you talk about your finger angle as you yeah. take those front sections where your finger angle is at? You bet. All right, let's talk about that. So here's what I want you to remember now, okay? I'm going to give it to you up here. I think it was Louie that asked that question. Louie Lou, okay? What angle are you cutting? All right, Louie, watch this. When I take this section, all right, everything is brought to this point. I need everybody to get that. So everything comes here. Everything is there, okay? So when I bring this here, what angle am I cutting? So here's my section. Okay, yeah, you can see it. Okay, here's my section. I'm probably doing about two sections each one. Okay, this comes up. This comes up, and I'm notching into it. What I want you to imagine is this, Luby. Look at this one. I'll move her out of the way. Okay. When I bring this up, that's the angle I cut. When I bring this one up, that's the angle I cut. When I bring this one up, that's the angle I cut. So I'm cutting straight lines. So if I'm standing here, Luby, and I bring this section right here to cut the line that I'm cutting according to where I'm standing is a horizontal line. Now, the way you're looking at it, Luby, it looks like diagonal on this two-dimensional surface. Surface. But if I stand, watch this section now. Let's go with this one right here. This is the next one I'm cutting. Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. Let's make sure that this is, nope, this is one I'm cutting. Okay. Now watch. Take a watch this now. Let's see what else we got to bring up here. Okay. So this is where I'm standing. I'm going to give her face to you. Okay. About three quarter right there. Okay. So here's where I'm standing. Large tooth comb. You see how cumbersome that, that comb started to get with it? I could tell right away. That's going to give me trouble. Okay. And, and then relax on your combing. Okay, this, you have to get this, guys. If you want this shape to be loose, I have to loosen up in here. I cannot cut everything so precise, excuse me, because if you do, then you're taking twice as much time going back and softening. I need you to get this. A haircut needs two things. Okay, a haircut needs two things. Number one, it must balance, and number two, it must function. A haircut doesn't have to blend in, okay? That's important. 
Now, see, Luby, could you see there when I was standing there? That's a horizontal line I'm cutting. Let's take this one here. Watch this. This is where it's at right here. Okay. All I'm going to do is take this hair up. Okay. So I bring this hair up. Look where I'm standing. Okay. Now I'm going to give you, I'm going to turn her to you. Okay. I lift up my guide. Now, just a moment. Okay. There. Okay. Now watch this. This is my guide. Now look at my comb. So now if I look at my comb, it is a horizontal line to me. If I stand over here and look at it, that's a diagonal line, but it's the cutting angle. What's my finger angle? So my finger angle, Luby, is a horizontal line. So I see right here, I'm going to put the comb on the line I'm going to cut right there. So now I'm going to turn her so you can see like you're seeing what I see. See that? That's a horizontal line. So what I'm doing is I'm cutting a series of horizontal lines around that triangle on the board that you see from the top view. Okay. That's all you need to get. Watch. See this? Horizontal, 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 horizontal. Now, the reason I'm doing it in these triangles is because look how short I've got the top, but look at the length that I've got. Okay. So that's what I love about these triangles. It gives me this length that goes from short to long. If I did a horseshoe and just came cross, now you've got so much mass of hair horizontally cut short, unless you over direct. Are you getting this, guys? If you're learning something here, just give me a yes. Okay, just give me a yes in terms of if you're learning something. So you are over directing the hair to cut this haircut. Rosie, <laughs> Rosie, good question. Let's talk about that. Okay, let's take a look at this hair right here. Okay, because some people say, Sam, so you're over directing this to the opposite side. Well, let me ask you this, Rosie. Look, watch this. This is where this hair lives. See this? Now, let's determine something. That is up and down, elevate, elevate, elevate. Can we agree this is elevation? Say yes if you can. Write it in there. Write yes if you can agree this is elevation. Thank you, AC. That's an up and down movement. Okay, now watch this. Sometimes I might elevate it like this low, but then sometimes I overdirect it forward because I want to put more weight and length over there, but that's the angle I'm cutting. Now, I just move the hair side to side. That is over direction. Are you with me now? Okay. Then what I do is I put a finger on it, a finger angle on it. Now I cut. So I elevate it up from its natural fall. I over directed it to 45 degrees. I put a finger on it. I cut it. You with me? If you're with me so far, say yes. Come on, guys. Type yes quickly. Good, Rosie. Okay, good. All right, Rosie, watch. Now you tell me, Rosie, if I'm over directing this. Natural fall. Watch this. Here's my guide. So I'm going to bring all this hair up to that guide and cut it. Elevate, 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 elevate. Cut. Did I move this side to side? Type the answer in there. Did I move it side to side? I elevated it. Now watch. Here I am. Now I'm going to say to myself, okay, I want to put more weight and length. I want to put it over there. So now watch what I'm going to do. Over direct side to side to side to side. Now look at where I'm at. Does that make sense? See, here's natural fall. Elevate to there. Now over direct to here. Did you get that? So, so what people say is they say, well, you elevated it over the other, you over directed to the other side. Okay, so what's my elevation? See, I'm elevating and my elevation right now, I'm going to tell you what my elevation is. If I look at this as a circle and I put a horizontal line in that, that line right here is matches that line. So I'm elevating the hair horizontal. Now I'm going to over direct it. I'm going to put more weight in the front. I'm going to over direct it way back here. Now I'm putting lots of weight and length over there. Does that make sense, guys? How many of you learned something there? That's, I need you to get that, Rosie. Okay. No over direction. Good, Rosie. You got it. Sonia, yes. Dean, yes. Good. There was no over direction in that. But once I move that top side to side, I'm over directing it. Are you, did you learn something? Okay. Put learn if you did. 
Yeah, okay, Rosie, now you get it. Excellent, Rosie. Huge learning lesson for you then, Rosie. Okay, here I am here. Now, one thing I want to tell you guys, you always pick up the triangle that you're working with. So where are you right now, Sam? I am working on, let's go to a clean one. I'm working on this triangle right here. Okay, so I just pick up that triangle. What you cannot do, guys, you need to get this. You cannot pick up any of the hair on the opposite side. Because if I bring this up here, watch this. Let's just pick it up. And I accidentally comb and pick up some of this hair and I'm cutting here and I put that in. Now you just cut a line and you just made this shorter. Okay, so you got to understand that, guys. Only cut when you're working with us. Now, I'm actually doing a concept here that we at Principal Based Design Rec and we call it swelling. So actually, all I'm doing is I'm swelling the hair and I'm actually just swelling some of it if you want to get technical. Okay, but I'm not going to go there, AC, and get that technical. Not necessary. Okay. All right. But I do believe, guys, that foundations and principles, man, are so, so critical in today's world. Now, watch what I got. Look how I haven't yet, I haven't touched that length yet and look at where i'm at and and how i've got a shape going on okay i i think that just this is just one of the coolest ways that you can layer hair in regards to what you do and how you do it to make things simple you know i think i appreciate what i've been taught in the past andrew which is a small sections but I think it's time, you know, people understand, okay, I'm going to use those small sections. Like when I did that, that Dorothy Hamill, that wedge, okay, consistency, small sections. But when I want these shapes to have out, to have more or less this kind of feel to it, then I'm going to find as many different approaches as I can. All right. Now let's go to the new daddy here and let's go to the 14 tooth texture shoe. All right. Now I want to talk about this. All right. People already have uh, contacted me and asked me, what's the difference between the Invisiblend and what's the difference from this? Well, basically what we did was we took the same concept of this, the Invisiblend, of that Invisiblend shear, and what we did was we thought, okay, let's take this concept of the Invisiblend and let's over polish this blade so it actually kind of pushes the hair so you get a softer edge, especially because this tends to be a little bit more of a, uh, uh, of a blade that people might consider to be a chunking blade. But watch the result I'm about to show you here. Okay, I'm going to put it up against my shirt so you can see. There we go. Still playing with this reverse thing, Andrew. All right, now that's the shear, okay? So now what I'm going to show you some really cool things about it. This is the Invisiblen. Now, the Invisiblen is great if you've got these lines that you want to take out, okay, that after you cut something, especially those blondes, you've layered them and you see the lines, this is great to get that out. Okay. What I'm trying to do, guys, is we're trying to create tools for you that give you minimum, with minimum effort, give you maximum impact, give you the maximum result you want. So mistakes, those issues with blondes and layers and the lines, so problem solver right here. All right. Point cutting. Doing a lot of point cutting. Okay. But point cutting can be really time consuming. And not only that, it's the wear and tear on your hand in terms of what it, what it does. So I want you to be aware of that. Just be aware of your point cutting, the wear and tear that it can have on your hand, your wrist, and on your blades. That said, what we want to do is come out with not a chunking shear, okay? This shear is completely different. Now watch what I'm going to do down here in these areas here. So I'm going to take off some length. I'll give you an example, all right? Let's take off some length. Now, what I don't want is I want a nice fresh edge here. I'll bring her up, Andrew. I want a nice fresh edge here, but I want an edge that doesn't look like it was freshly cut. I want something to look like it was cut a week or two ago. You know what I'm talking about. That's why you come in and you scan, why we're doing a lot of scanning. Okay. So now watch what I'm going to do. I'm just going to bring it down and I'm going to take it. I'm going to cut to a length that where I feel you're going to be able to see, see the difference. So let's cut here. I'll leave a little bit of length since I got this nice cut going. Okay. Now watch what I'm going to do. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go one, two, then I'm going to slide my hand out. Now I'm going to take off all my length. Okay, so I'm just going to take all that length. And the open and closure of this to me is much easier because my thumb is not so stressed because I'm on a nice relaxed result. Now look at this edge. See that edge, how it doesn't look, how it doesn't look so blunt. That's the concept. All right. So now, Such a cool shear. Hey, a um, couple of quick questions, Sammy. 
Yeah. Um, Alex was asking if we want the crown longer, can we take the guideline a little bit longer? That would be affirmative. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah. um, um, where did it go? Sorry. Oh, there we go. Sonia is asking, um, is this cut good for curly or very fine hair? Oh, this cut is good for curly hair. Gauge the type of curl. Thank you for that, Andrew. Gauge the type of curl you're working with. Okay. I think, you know, you got to really understand the types of curl you're working with and then the do's and don'ts of that. Highly recommend take a Mazzani class. Those people are just extremely, extremely knowledgeable. I've been learning so much and I still have so much more learning to do. So I would suggest that if you're concerned about it, you know, wet it down, have more control, but be aware, you know, that shrinkage that's going to happen. So can you do it on curly hair? Yes, you can. Maybe as it gets curly, you might want to put the curl down and go more freehand. That's another class in itself. So now um, in terms of um, wavy hair, it's great with wavy hair. Awesome with wavy hair, as you can see here. A medium type curl. Awesome on a medium curl. Now. Al, if you go in and you want to leave it longer, yes. I'm going to give you a helpful hint, guys. Always learn some patterns. I could take this haircut extremely long and do the same pattern. But I have to understand that the longer I extend my hand, I, if I want to cut a guide way out to here, Al, look how long that hair is going to be. Now watch where this hair is going to fall. So it's going to fall. The first layer is going to fall there, but the link's going to be somewhere down here. Does that make sense? So you just really got to gauge. Well, how do you gauge, Sam? If you if somebody says to you, want, I want to keep my length, and this happens, Andrew, when you go to layer people, well, are you going to layer it so I lose my length or it gets too thin? Okay. Two major concerns. If this is the case where you want to keep this length, then I want you to take about the top of the nape area, top of the nape area, not the bottom of the nape. Because there's breakage and you're measuring breakage. Take this, bring this up, and then tell yourself, okay, that's how short I could take this top so that she keeps her length. Did that make sense? Okay. Now, sometimes I'll find with fine hair, Andrew, what I will do is do this, but I will take a zigzag section underneath the, in the hairline, put that into a ponytail, and I'll just cut what I don't zigzag. I'll cut this up in the same pattern. Then I'll release it, but I did that with fine hair because I'm choosing to keep the density at the perimeter with fine hair. Al, does that help you out, brother? I think it was Al or Al, Alan that, Al, that asked that. Which of your shears do you recommend for blunt haircuts, bobs, etc.? I love the Signature Series uh, 6.25 for bobs. It's awesome on bobs. It's a medium length shear, even a swivel handle if you swivel. But that's my go-to shear for bobs would be my 6.25. Okay, I hope we answered that for you. Al, if we did, let me know, buddy. Okay. All right, now watch this. All right, now watch. If we go in now, Alan Papaleo. Alan. Oh, Alan. Buddy, I can't wait to see you at a show. I hope you and the family and everybody is doing well, my friend, and you're taking care of yourself. I'm sending you a big virtual hug. Alan Papaleo, guys, if you don't know Alan, you got to follow Alan. Great, great haircutter. Great haircutter. I believe, Alan, let us know. Are you still with Ergo? Are you still doing some things with Ergo? I believe you might be. Uh, okay, here we go. Now watch. Let's get down to this bottom. Once again, These are the. this is the 14 tooth that I'm going to use right here. Okay, now watch. When I use this, what happens is because this blade is over polished, it pushes the hair. So any shear that you know, let's call over polished dull, if it's dull, it pushes it, you don't get a straight line, you get a slanted line, you get a curved line. So that's why I love this shear, Andrew, because I could stay here and camp, 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 and I'm not going to get such a solid notched line inside of an existing line. Okay, here we go again. Watch. Once again, this will save me time. Uh, you know, the idea, once again, tools. The idea is to give you a tool that you can create maximum impact with minimum effort. Okay, point cutting. So I go in. This is about where I want my, that's where my length's going to be. But I want to not get, take some of this out and soften the inside of that. So I'm using the 14 tooth a point cutter. And I'm going to come in. Sometimes it, based on density, close twice. One, two. I punch twice. I come down to that guide. And now I just work. Now you're saying, well, Sam, you talked about it, it saves your hand in terms of, well, guys, if I was point cutting, my hand would be like this in an uncomfortable position. My elbow would be, my arm would be lifted. 
So yes, it's going to save me. It, it, it's great. Less stress on my hand and my wrist. Now watch this. Now look at that line, how clean the line looks. But when I separate that, look at the degree of softness that I'm getting on the edge. You know, that's why I'm loving this shear in terms of the reason and why we created this shear for you. So a lot of times I'm coming back in and let's say that you're coming back in and you're refreshing a haircut. She wants to grow it out and you want to get a little pop, a little more volume into it. Just come back in and just start to just close. Now, this is one thing I want you to get. Don't slide out with this one. If you're going to slide, I want you to use the Invisiblend to slide out with. This one is not the one that you go in and, and slide. I want you to just cut, cut, as my good man, Jesse, chop, chop, chop it, chop, chop, and then move on. Okay. So, Andrew, just a great shear in terms of, you know, natural curly hair, working with it. But remember... The ends need friends, you know, the, don't go so much in on uh, so much on the ends, depending upon the type of curl and the density of the curl in terms of what you're doing. All right. Now watch this. Let's go in and I'm going to diffuse this side for you here, guys. All right. Because I got time to do that. Okay. And now see, this is where I could come in. I could personalize this. I could actually cr create this a little bit more like. I, I love dressing these guys a little bit different. Tuck this, guys, to make this look a little bit more mullet. Just tuck that, okay? And then just let these – that's what I love about these shortness, taking the shortness up here is the idea of what you can do by just simply coming in and tucking that, and you're getting this whole idea of this shape that kind of sits back deeper. So the idea, once again, is it's about the way you're um, uh, dressing these things, too. Uh, let's go back to Linda Marcy. Are you elevating that line? Yes. I, I held it in my hand, so I'm elevating, but I'm not extremely elevating it. Okay? I hope that helps you out, my dear, in terms of that. All right. Any other questions? That help you out, Linda? So I'm elevating. Once I put something in my hand to cut it, I elevate it. And why would I elevate it? I want it just a little bit softer. That's why I would go in and elevate it. Now, I've been talking about working with your hands and working with a diffuser, but watch what I'm going to do, guys, in terms of this. And look at that top area. See how that top area is? And then I could come in and let, you know, if I've got some time, let's go back in, Andrew. Watch how I'll kind of explode that fringe area a little bit for you guys. Make something happen out of that fringe area. But let's go in with a diffuser first, working with my Redken One United. Okay. A great, simple cut. I think you could see it didn't take long to execute. Just real simple. Now let's work in the front. I'm going to start in the front. I'm going to work my way in the front. Look at my fingers. Okay. So I just alter my fingers and now I come in and I just grab and crinkle. So I want you to just crush it, but you're softly crushing the hair with your hand. So it's not so much of a serious crush like I used to when I would scrunch. Uh, it's just something I'm just going through and just really molding, if you will. Sprinkle. Put the soft crush that I'm doing right now. Okay. Thanks, Luby. Glad you like the texture. It's pretty cool. Heavy. What's up, my dear? I hope you are doing well. Heavy Pearson is on board, a Sandia ambassador. Make sure you follow her on her Instagram page. Evie, write that in the box there. What's your Instagram? Okay, now watch this, guys. Watch when I release this. And look how I'm lifting it. See, now I'm really giving it the shape that I want. And notice I'm letting it, how my fingers spread. Can you see that? Okay. And I'm working with the vision dryer. I have it on high, but not high speed. I have it on low speed, high heat, but not high speed. I like working with low speed, high heat especially when I'm doing this crinkled effect. It just really softly puts it in. Mimo, my friend from Italy. How are you, Mimo? So good to see you, my friend. Follow Mimo Duarte. Duarte. Uh, Mimo, put your um, IG handle in the chat box, buddy, please. Put it in the handle. An Italian artist, he's a designer. He leads the Italian team for Red Kid, and he is awesome. Make sure you follow Mimo. Okay, now watch what I'm going to get here. Look, check it out. Okay? Look at, see, see the effect I got out of that, guys? Now watch, I'm just going to continue that. So look how I work with my hands. See, I just alter my hands. So back, forward, back, forward, now in, and crush. 
Okay, simple, soft crush. And now let's place that in. So now work on the face frame first. Get the face frame area going first, okay? And this is where I, I believe I'm, I'm going to go. You know, I'm working with a flat iron, but working with a flat iron not to straighten hair, working with a flat iron to go in and give it movement, give it bend. And I think that's good. We're picking up a diffuser, but not diffusing like we used to. Going in and picking up a diffuser to crinkle or softly crush the hair with your fingers. And working with the fingers to get to get that undulation all the way through. And now can you see now what I do is I'll just simply move back. So now watch how I'll move back and I'll go back one, one space. So I alter my fingers now. So that little pinky goes back. My ring goes forward. My middle goes back. Sam, what? That, that, that requires like, that's, the, that's not easy. No, it's not. That's why I do those finger exercises. So these are finger exercises that I do. You have to make your fingers very kind of uh, limber, Andrew. But make them very limber, guys, so that you're capable of doing this, I think is critical. Let the diffuser do the work for you. Let the diffuser do the work. Thank you, Scott. Glad you like it. Shirley, thank you. Yeah, Shirley, I love these styles, too, where your hands are your tools. You know, I know, I know, Tom, I got to sell brushes. I know, Dana, I got to sell brushes. But I got to tell you guys, it's all about just, you know, understanding that some tools you're going to pick up when you need them. I'm not saying don't eliminate tools. You will always need your tools. Now, look at this side, what I've got. Look at the undulation that I'm creating out of that compared to what I haven't done. Okay. So what I don't want to do is when I, when I say, you know, uh, this natural look is happening. I think there's a little bit of dressing now that's going on with the finishing with this natural texture that you're working with. So this is up to you to share that knowledge with those with the um, uh, clients in regards to that. Now watch this fringe. I'm just going to pop this fringe a little bit more, Andrew. Okay, and then uh, let's pop do a little. Fringe. Yeah, let's pop it. Do a little recap here, buddy. Uh, so basically, guys, while I'm doing this, you can see. I'll drop her so you can see since I'm working on the fringe. I just basically worked with what we refer to as Redkin at the bevels of the head, but yet at San Via, our side area sits further back. I want you to be aware of that. And then what I did was I basically elevated all of those to a stationary point, which is the top of that triangle. That's where I took that. Okay. Then I did that all the way around, taking everything there, worked on a couple sections. One of the tools I worked with was a large tooth comb. And I recommend working with a large tooth comb. And the reason being is because that's going to give you a little bit more control, especially when you're dry cutting. A big discovery for me this season. All right. I'm going to take a small triangle here, Andrew. And all I want to do is just add something to this. Give it a little more pop. Okay. So now once I do this, I'm going to hold the comb vertical. Okay. I'm going to give you a profile view of it. Okay. See that? I'm going to move myself out of the way. I'm going to elevate horizontally. Hold the comb vertical. And I want this right at the tip of her nose. Yeah, that's right, buddy. I'm going for it. So I just pop that, extend my finger, and now pop. So I'm using the 14 tooth to create this fringe. Okay. Now watch what I'm going to get when I'm done here. Okay. Now, because I've used that 14 tooth, look how soft that is. You can just see. And as I massage that, you can just see the softness in that. Okay. And I'm going to pop her up. Okay, this is the side that I dried. This side over here, I have not dried. Okay, this side here, get rid of that. I've dried. Okay, now look how that fringe just came in and just gave it a little bit more impact just on that with that fringe. And that's simple with a 14 tooth, just working with a 14 tooth on that. All right, hope you guys learned something today, Andrew, in regards to that. Just some simple dry cutting going through. Working with some layers, but what I really, hopefully that they got today, look how extremely short that top is. And then how you're able to really leave this long. And then the idea of how a fringe comes back through and just simply awakens the shape. And then don't forget, guys, magical tool. We're loving this. It's the 14 tooth. It's going to save you some time. Hope you guys enjoyed it, Andrew. Thanks again, buddy, for being here with us today.
Uh, any yeah, questions yeah. I missed? Um, actually, I'm going to put you back on full screen for a minute. Can you pull the mannequin to the side and give them a screenshot opportunity, please? Yep. I'm going to move it closer, guys. How is that, Andrew? Awesome. All right. All right. Thank you for Did doing that, Sammy. Like Did I miss anything, buddy? No, I think we hit most of the questions and... Um, oh, Kelly just asked, can you tell me what the swelling technique is? Well, yeah, that's oh. what you were just doing pretty much, right? <laughs> yeah, swelling, but swelling is when I'm actually laying it and wrapping it over the top of the head. So that would be too swelling. I was elevated on a diagonal fashion up to the top. So I was, gotcha. I'm going to get really technical for just a few seconds. I was yeah. swelling some of this, but not all of it. Now that's technical. Okay. Don't go, don't worry about that. She's asking that question because she probably understands swelling. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else, buddy? No, I think we got it, my friend. Thank you so much for sharing gifts of knowledge all morning long. And um, yeah, this is fun to watch you work with some of those new tools and that, that new 14 tooth uh, shear is a blast. Oh, man, man. It's, it definitely rocks. Love you, buddy. Be good. Be safe. I'll see you again. All right. Bye, Thank everybody. you, Sammy.